Okay, let's have this example. A 75 year old COPD patient uh, on mechanical ventilation secondary to COPD exacerbation. He's on a VC volume control mode with tidal volume of, again, this arbitrary number. And it's, I know they are different from here because as I said, the example is just arbitrary. Um, and this image is just to show you something, but let's follow for 80 ml to be delivered by the ventilator with each breath. On the ventilator monitor screen, the patient is pulling only between 150 to 250 cc of tidal volume. What's going on? What do I mean by this? See this example here. This is a patient on volume control and see this is the tidal volume the patient's supposed to get with every breath. This is what's set by the ventilator and this is the actual tidal volume the patient receiving or pulling. And the in volume control, the minimum tidal volume here is usually around 430. Again, can be a little bit less, a little bit more. So, but it's usually run around this number because that's what the ventilator will guess. And the ventilator has sensors to measure how much the, the patient actually receiving. So what I mean by this question that this is here, we said 480. And let's say this is the 480 here. And here what's being recorded that the patient is getting only to 150 to 250. So he was supposed to receive the 480. But what's going on? Because he's supposed to receive at least the tidal volume or around the tidal volume. That's what guaranteed by the ventilator. But he's only receiving this and this. So what's going on? Where the air that the ventilator is pushing into the patient going? So that's what we need to talk about now. So what's, where is that tidal volume going? So this is the ventilator and the air, as you know, is going through the inspiratory loop. This tidal volume will go through this and to the patients. This is the ET tube and this is the balloons. So the possibility is here. The first possibility, the air is going through and leaking through its route to the patient's lung. And the most common really reason for that is the balloon are leaky. This is what we call cough leak. We talked about it before. So there is malfunction with these balloons because the balloons should allow the air to move only in one direction and into by that by direction actually in and out, but through the ET tube only. If these balloons are not functioning, then the air, the tidal will get in and then leak backward. Only some of the tidal volume reach the patient. So the first thing when we see that, check for cough leak and simply is by asking the respiratory therapist to check for that sometimes if you get closer to the patient to the ett you will hear gurgling that the air is coming back but the rt with a quick machine and they can quickly with the machine can check for that so if there is air leak cough leak either the rt the what they do they deflate and inflate it again and if it's not working, you may need to re-intubate, take the E2 tube and re-intubate the patient. But the first thing is really uh, before this is deflate and reinflate the balloon and see if it's still cuff leak. The other possibility, where is this tidal volume? And to know if it's working or not, just check the, uh, the monitor or the ventilator monitor as we just showed you if the tidal volume now is picking up. The other reason, maybe the balloons are working, but the air is going here and just leaking from here or from here. Um, and we start seeing air here and pneumothorax, right? Let's say PTX pneumothorax. And we may have a bronco 
plural fistula so the air is coming here but immediately leaks to the plural space as if the patient is not receiving that and the treatment for this is to treat the underlying problem of course you need a pulmonologist you need a maybe a thoracic surgeon and sometimes we put a chest tube and sometimes if you have a continuous air leak we have we've had a patient where he's not pulling like we give him let's say 500 cc he's pulling barely 100 cc and we see like air bubbles in the chest tubes because the air immediately comes from here and leak out so the treatment for that of course you need to treat the underlying problem so these are really the most common reason the two most common reason for low tidal volume being pulled by the patients now sometimes you see low tidal volumes and pressure support ventilation or those on TP's trial for weaning and that's usually a sign that patient if there is low tidal volume that's a sign patient is not ready for extubation because he has to be able to pull adequate tidal volume for his ideal body weight